Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial series on how to create your own programming language using Python. In this episode, we will create token classes and the lexer. I originally wrote this project in C Sharp but I will be using Python for the purpose of the tutorial as Python is easier to work with. The C Sharp variant and all credits will be on my GitHub page. Link in the description. So, without further ado, let's get started. A token class is basically a collection of the different types of symbols available in a programming language. For example, numbers is a token class, plus signs is a token class, etc. Depending on what token type, the token might also have a value attached to it. For example, an integer token will also store its corresponding value. In the first few tutorials, we will only create a few basic tokens for arithmetic operation, so numbers, operators and parentheses. In future tutorials, there will be more token types such as variables, if statements, booleans, etc. A lexer is a function that converts the code typed into the terminal, into a list of tokens. It will take each character and convert it into the appropriate token class. The list of tokens is what the computer will read when it tries to execute your code. In this new Python project, we will begin by defining the different token classes. Right now, we will be defining integers, floats, plus, minus, multiply, divide, left and right parentheses only. These tokens will be enough for pretty much all basic arithmetic operations. Next, we will create a class to store tokens. In the class constructor, we will take in the token type, which we just defined above, and the token value, if it has any. We will also define a representation method to easily print out each token on the terminal. When we write the lexer, the lexer will loop over the command string entered by the user and convert each character into a token class object. We will then make a while loop and set a condition to count smaller than the length of the text. Basically, this loop will run as long as the count, which is the current position of the loop, is smaller than the length of the text. Within our while loop, we will grab the current character of the code at the start of every loop. Next, we will create multiple if statements to handle the different types of characters that matches our token types. We will first check if the current character is a tab or an empty space. If it is then we will simply skip over. Then, we check if the character is a plus, minus, multiply or divide symbol and if it is a parentheses. If it is then we will append a new instance of the token class pass in the type of token in the new instance and then move to the next character. Since the if statements are extremely similar, we can just copy and paste but remember to change the conditions of the statements. Finally, we need to see if the character is a number. This will be a bit tricky, as numbers often consists of multiple characters. Decimals, or floats, will even have a decimal point. So, under the if statement checking if the character is a digit, we will define a few variables and make another while loop. We need to initialize an empty string to store the number in string form, a counter to count the decimal points, and another variable to hold the current character. The conditions of the while loop will be similar to the if statement. As long as the current character is either a decimal point or a digit, we will continue adding to our number string. If we encounter another type of character, then it means our number has finished, and thus we will break out of the loop. Within the loop, we will first check if the current character is a decimal point. If it is then, we will also check if the dot count is 1. If the dot count is 1, then it means we are currently seeing the second dot, which is not possible in a number, so we break out of the loop. Otherwise, we increment the dot count and add a dot to our number string. If the current character is not a dot, then we add whatever digit it is to our number string. Then, we will check if the count, not the dot count, but the overall count to keep track of the position, is bigger or equal to the length of the code. If it is, then it means we have reached the last character, and thus we break out. If it isn't, then we update the current character and repeat the process. Once we have finished looping over the number and broke out of the while loop, we will do one final check. We will check if the dot count is 0 or 1. If the dot count is 1, then it means there is a dot in our number, which means the number is a float. So, we return a new token class instance with the type float and the value. If the dot count is 0, then that means our number is an integer, and we return a new token class instance with a type integer. The lexer function is now finished, and we will finalize it by returning the tokens list. Finally, we will check if our lexer function is working. To check, we will create an infinite loop at the bottom of our program. In the loop, we will first take in an input. The input will be the code the user enters, kind of similar to a Python interpreter. Then, we will pass in the input text into our lexer. Finally, we will print out the result, which is a list of tokens. 
If you've done everything correctly, you should see a correct list of tokens which matches your code. If there is something wrong, for example the tokens doesn't match then please check if you passed in the correct token type when you created each token class instance. Otherwise, you can comment down below with your code and I can help you out. That's it for this tutorial, thank you for watching and make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you found this useful. In this next tutorial, we will create a parser for our program. I will explain in more details what a parser is in the tutorial. After that, we will create an interpreter in the third tutorial, and our program will be able to output actual results for operations.